active specific immunotherapy in combination with GCMF40 in management of metastatic invasive carcinoma. SI in cancer treatment. It's quite similar to the mechanism of action of the SI in allergic reactions and in the autoimmune condition. So the tumor antigen elicit production of autoantibodies, then autoantibodies are isolated. There are two ways to do that. It's either use about three to five gram of the tumor tissue itself if it's uh, available, or again, procure it from the blood, of the patient's blood. So the autoantibodies are isolating, and then uh, an immune adjuvant is added to that. That will promote the conversion into harmless immunogens, which are re-administered back to the patient. And patient's immune system recognizes the immunogens and produce anti-idiotypic antibodies, AB2, that subsequently produce tumor antigen binding antibodies, AB3, which specifically target tumor antigens. Cancer therapy has long depended on strategies that directly attack tumor cells. Multimodal cancer therapies combined with other biological treatments such as systemic hypothermia or the um, high-dose vitamin C or uh, various other immunological, uh, immunologically active modalities are now emerging as important additions to conventional therapies. Metastatic cancer is, all, is very often a fatal disease, almost always, with an extremely low survival rate. The cause of cancer development involves pathogenic cascade that includes inflammation, the overexpression of reactive oxygen species, uh, loss of DNA repair, genome instability, neovascularization, epithelial infiltration, collagen destruction, immunosuppression of cancer cells, and their evasion of apoptosis. Immunotherapy has recently been described as the fourth pillar of cancer treatment in addition to surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation therapy. It is of uh, utmost importance to understand both the cross-interaction mechanism between the immune constimulatory and inhibitory molecules, as well as uh, tumor cells in the development of the successful immunotherapeutic strategy to find aggressive cancers. An optimal protective immune system must balance eliminating foreign pathogens and tolerance of self-antigens to be successful. Immunotherapy works by modulating the immune system to attack malignant or hyperactive inflammatory cells. And the idea of advanced immunotherapeutic methods must also incorporate personalized agents that can induce more specific immune responses against malignant cells. SI can reactivate and strengthen the immune therapy by explicitly producing anti-idiotypic antibodies to target against cancer. Autologous SI vaccine have so far shown promising results in cancer prevention and early or intermediate cancer treatment and uh, one of the case studies from the retrospective analysis you can see on your screen now. The autologous vaccines have so far been used in early and intermediate stage and are most often used in cancers of liver, stomach, pancreas, breast, prostate, fatty cancers, and melanoblastomas, but also used, see, you can see one of the uh, examples, such skin cancers, the breast cancers as well epithelial cancers, various forms of epithelial cancers. These are metastatic lesion, again metastatic lesions. And even in uh, veterinarian practice, ASI has been widely used in veterinarian practice as well. We have published uh, multiple uh, publications, and one of them is quite interesting, the active specific immunotherapy 
in combination with GCMF-40 in management of metastatic invasive carcinoma. Very interesting case report. Propose everyone to take a look at that. So if we want to discuss again in specifics the mechanisms of action of the SI therapy in cancer treatment, I would like to come back to that again for a minute. The use of anti-idiotypic antibodies to stimulate anti-tumor activity is deemed as a, one of the most promising immunological approaches to cancer treatment. According to the idiotypic network theory, the presence of tumor antigens will induce the production of AB1 to generate the production of anti-idiotypic antibodies AB2 with AB2 beta playing the essential role by inducing anti-anti-idiotypic antibodies, AB3. The fundamental concept of SI is to initiate antigen-specific immune responses by isolating tumor tissue and adding an immunological adjuvant. Administration of the SI vaccine consistent of harmless immunogens induces the production of anti-idiotypic antibodies, AB2, followed by the production of anti-anti-idiotypic antibodies, AB3, which specifically target tumor antigens. Autologous active specific immunotherapy vaccines have been shown to effectively inhibit the growth of solid tumors in early or intermediate stages of cancer. And with that, I would like to discuss another case of osteosarcoma, that images you can see on your screens. It's a female patient aged 31 years old with a height of 1 meter 65 centimeters and 50 kilogram body weight, was diagnosed with osteosarcoma in 2015. The patient entered remission after several different chemotherapy protocols and integrative immunotherapy. It was the use of dendritic cells and some vitamin infusions. However, in November 2018, she suffered a relapse of the same osteosarcoma with lung metastasis and was immediately treated with conventional protocol of intravenous gemcitabine, irinotecan every 15 days with uh, cyclophosphamide daily as an oral immune suppressant. From April 2019 onwards, in conjunction with combined conventional chemotherapy, the patient began receiving ASI treatment with uh, uh, some uh, IV ozone therapy of uh, 60 mcg per milliliter in 200 ml of blood, as well as systemic hypothermia, and that went for a month. Subsequent CT scans show no worsening and normal immunogram, immune hemogram, and phenotyping profile and absence of anemia and absence of liver toxicity and so on and so forth. And the patient remains stable with a relatively uh, decent, good quality of life, just with a very minor pain and no other negative symptoms. Another case, a 44-year-old female presented uh, in the year of 2018. From the history, we know that in uh, 2003, she was diagnosed with a right breast cancer, followed by right breast mastectomy, then five years of tamoxifen. Subsequently, in 2013, was diagnosed with a left breast cancer with a further left modified radical modified mastectomy and one year of tamoxifen in 2015 diagnosed with multiple metastatic lesions in liver, lungs and even bones, uh, underwent radiotherapy and chemotherapy uh, for six months. Then subsequently in 2016 was prescribed with uh, 
letrozole therapy with uh, zolindroni acid. Parallel to the conventional oncological treatment, she performed six sessions of systemic hypothermia. In January 2018, PET scan showed worsening of the lymphadenopathy in lungs, five new liver lesions, and overall spreading of metastatic lesions to the spine and iliac bone. The tumor marker CA, CA153, also were somewhat increased. Uh, the CA was not that much increased, was only eight. CA 15.3 was more uh, notably increased, it's over the 100. The patient was starting on capsetabine, 3000 mg per day. And subsequently, the repeated uh, blood work has showed again, just some mild elevation of the CA and more notable elevation of the CA 15.3, uh, 153 up to one the 290. And patient also start developing other symptoms like anemia and all. So what were the options? Some of the op options that uh, the patient has uh, agreed to and uh, opted uh, for was the complementary immunotherapy with uh, active specific immunotherapy and GCMF. The treatment protocol was started in April 2018 it was uh, one course of the ASI therapy, it consisted of 30 vials, which was uh, administered subcutaneously three times per week. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to say that it can be given uh, as frequent as every other day, but in this case, the physician who was uh, the main treating physician and the patient decided to do it uh, three times a week. And... Uh, there was a weekly administration of the GCMF Forte, which is the slow-release depot form of the GCMF, uh, which is given subcutaneously once a week for 10 weeks. And there were some nutritional and the lifestyle modifications done as well. So what were the outcomes? On the follow-up, the, uh, the picture on the PET scan has been stabilized, there has been no further worsening, and there has been no further increase of the tumor marker CA and CA153 further detected. The patient uh, is quite resistant to chemotherapy and radiotherapy with no further options of conventional medical treatment left and quite a poor life expectancy. And uh, the addition of the SI and GCMF as immunotherapeutic modality succeeded in efficiently modulating of immunity, provided strong support in maintaining homeostasis and obvious increase in life expectancy and improvement of quality of life and uh, even uh, also added to the adequate pain management, which is extremely, extremely important uh, in uh, cancer patients. And sometimes it is a great challenge to achieve uh, good pain control.